chemists find it useful to place chemical reactions into categories. By placing reactions into categories, we can predict the outcomes of the chemical reactions more successfully. We will be organizing our reactions into five categories. In the previous lesson, we studied synthesis reactions. This lesson will focus on decomposition reactions. Let's start it out with the definition of decomposition reactions. A decomposition reaction is where a single compound undergoes a reaction that produces two or more simpler substances. Decomposition reactions are the easiest reaction type to identify because they're the only reaction type that have a single reactant. One reactant breaking apart into two or more pieces. Decomposition reactions are also almost exactly the opposite of synthesis reactions, the type we studied in the previous lesson. If we were going to describe decomposition reactions generically, the equation might look something like this. Here we have our one reactant, our single reactant, a compound made up of elements A and B, and that breaks apart or decomposes into simpler parts, element A and element B. It's often the case that decomposition reactions require some kind of energy to be put into them in order to cause the compound to break apart. There's got to be something to break the bond energy or the bonds between these two elements. Quite often that energy is in the form of heat, so we put a triangle above the arrow to indicate that some energy was put into it in the form of heat to make A and B break apart. Now we know chemical reactions are put into five main categories, and decomposition is one of those main categories. But we also have subcategories for some of the reaction types, and decomposition has five subcategories to go along with it. The first subcategory is decomposition of binary compounds, or what I like to refer to as simple decomposition, because this is about as plain and simple as decomposition gets. It says here, it's the simplest form of decomposition where the decomposing compound is composed of just two elements. That's where the binary comes from, two parts. The compound decomposes into two parts. It's like A and B breaking up into A plus B. Take a look at this first example, the electrolysis of water. Water is a pretty stable molecule and it needs a little help to break it apart. Electrolysis is simply using an electric current to decompose or separate a compound into its individual elements. So we run some electricity through the water and that will break the chemical bonds, allowing the hydrogen and oxygen to separate. In fact, I'm gonna put that electricity above the arrow just as a reminder that energy was put into this reaction. When we break the molecule apart, it breaks up into two separate parts, hydrogen gas and oxygen gas, both of which are diatomics, so those subscripts are absolutely necessary. When they're by themselves, they have to have the subscripts. But it's not a balanced equation yet, so I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna put a coefficient of two, so I have two oxygens on both sides, and then now I got four hydrogens here, so I'm going to put a coefficient of two there, and now we've got a balanced equation. That's our first decomposition reaction. Let's take a look at this in a video clip. Attach two platinum electrodes to a nine volt battery or DC power supply, and watch as oxygen immediately forms at the anode and hydrogen immediately forms at the cathode. Notice that hydrogen forms at a faster rate than oxygen, and the final volume of hydrogen gas produced is exactly double the volume of oxygen gas produced. Stoichiometry in action. Collect the gases by opening the stopcocks and allowing gas to flow into inverted test tubes for three to five seconds. Prove that you have just split water by inserting a burning splint into the hydrogen test tube. 
Insert a glowing splint into the oxygen test tube and the nearly extinguished flame will spark back to life as the oxygen gas fuels its combustion. Now let's take a look at mercury 2 oxide, HGO. Two parts, it's a simple binary decomposition, so obviously you're going to break it up into mercury and oxygen, but it's got to be O2. You cannot have single atoms of oxygen in your reactants or products. It's not signal over here because it's bonded to mercury, but by breaking it apart, it's got to be a diatomic. That one's ready to go. We just have to balance it. Two oxygens on the right, two oxygens on the left, two mercuries on the left, two mercuries on the right. These are going to be easy to balance problems. Next one, nitrogen triiodide, one of my all-time favorites. It's a very unstable contact explosive. If you touch it, it blows up. It's loud. It's got a really sharp crack to it when it, it, it detonates. It, um, it smells. It's toxic. It makes purple smoke. I mean, what more can you ask for? I'll show you a video clip after we look at this reaction. There's two parts, nitrogen and iodine. So obviously, it's going to break up into nitrogen, the diatomic, and iodine, the diatomic. Both of those are diatomic elements. Don't screw that part up. Don't bring I3 over to the right. That would be bad. So two diatomics by themselves. Then we just have to balance the equation. Now we've got um, three iodines on one side. We've got two iodines on the other. And when you have an odd number on one side and an even number on the other side, that always makes balancing a little clumsier. So what I like to do is turn an odd number of particles into an even number. I've got three iodines. I'm going to put a two in front of that. Now I've got an even number of iodines at six. That makes it easy to fix this side as well. Six iodines, and I've got two nitrogens. Again, these are not going to be that bad to balance. So let's take a look at this contact explosive. I like this video clip. It's always good to start a video off with a bang, and there could hardly be an easier way of doing that than with this stuff. What we have here is a contact explosive called nitrogen triiodide. It's a highly unstable substance that detonates when disturbed. Now you might have heard of nitroglycerin, which is another kind of contact explosive, which goes off when you hit it with a hammer, but this stuff is in a league of its own. Even something like a mosquito landing on it will set it off. Let's take a look at another subcategory of decomposition. The decomposition of metal carbonates. Metal carbonates decompose to form metal oxides and carbon dioxide gas. When you see a metal carbonate as your reactant, and it's a standalone element because it's a decomposition, you want this sentence to run through your head. You want to memorize that. Let's look at it with an example. Magnesium carbonate is a metal carbonate. Magnesium is the metal, carbonate is the polyatomic ion. What's it going to make? Well, magnesium will be the oxide, so this is going to be magnesium oxide. Magnesium is a plus two, oxygen is a negative two. It's already balanced just fine for the formula. And then CO2 is carbon dioxide. I don't have to look that one up. That's all there is to it. Metal carbonate makes a metal oxide and carbon dioxide. And that one's already balanced. Sometimes you get lucky. Let's see what happens with sodium carbonate. Sodium's a metal, carbonate's the polyatomic ion. It's gonna make a metal oxide, so in this case, sodium oxide, Na2O. Sodium's a plus one, oxygen's a negative two, so that's the way the formula balances. Check those charges. And carbon dioxide gas. And that one's balanced. Man, this is easy. Decomposition of metal carbonates. Another subcategory, the decomposition of metal hydroxides. When you see a metal hydroxide as your reactant in a decomposition reaction, I want this sentence to flow through your head. Most metal hydroxides decompose to form metal oxides and water. Metal hydroxides decompose to form metal oxides and water. 
let's take a look with calcium hydroxide. This is a metal hydroxide. Calcium's a metal. Hydroxide's your polyatomic ion. We got the right charges and the right compound to begin with, plus two and minus one. That's why we got the subscript on the polyatomic ion. It's going to break apart into two pieces, but this is going to be calcium oxide and water. Now I want to make sure I got calcium oxide right. Calcium is plus two, oxygen is negative two, so the charges are right. That's good to go. I know water is correct, so I'm not worried about that one. We got the right formulas in place. Now we look to see if it's balanced and, oh no, another one that's balanced. This is too easy. There's nothing to do. If you get the compounds right, sometimes it's going to be that easy. It will fall into place for you. But here's a little word of warning, not specific to this compound, but for all chemical reactions. If you're writing out your own products like we are here, and you get one of them wrong, or maybe it's a reactant and you write that down wrong. If you get a reactant or a product formula incorrect, you could create an impossible to balance situation. So if you're doing one of these problems and you're spending 10, 15 minutes trying to balance a problem, that's probably on you because you didn't know how to write the formulas right and you created an impossible situation. Everything I provide you is doable, but you can create something that's impossible. So have fun with that. Take a look at aluminum oxide. A metal, aluminum is a metal, hydride, charges are plus three and minus one. That's why they've got the subscript three down here. Aluminum is going to make aluminum oxide, which has a charge of plus three on the aluminum and negative two on the oxygen. So I got to neutralize it with these subscripts. So I get a plus six and a minus six. Got to make the compound right. And water. So now I have one that needs some balancing. The compounds are all good. I see I have two aluminums on the right-hand side. I know I'm gonna need at least two aluminums over here, so I'm gonna put that coefficient in place. That's gonna take my three oxygens up to six oxygens and my three hydrogens up to six hydrogens. So I'm gonna come back here and take care of the hydrogens. That gives me six hydrogens. It also gives me three oxygens here to add to the three oxygens here, that gives me the six oxygens I need. So that's balanced. Again, it won't be hard to balance if you write the compounds correctly in the first place. Now maybe, just maybe, you're a very observant person or a deep thinker, and you recall back to the synthesis reactions and you say, you know, there was something about those synthesis reactions that reminds me of what we were just learning. And that might be true because yesterday or in the previous lesson, we learned that metal oxides plus water make a metal hydroxide. And what we just talked about was that metal hydroxides decompose into a metal oxide plus water. So synthesis is putting it together, making one compound. The decomposition is taking that one compound and breaking back up into its pieces. Learn it forward, learn it backward. It's like a two for one special. If you learn it really well one way, it's like you get it free going the other way. Definitely worth learning. Metal chlorates and the whole chlorate family. Metal chlorates, as well as metal perchlorates, metal chlorites, and metal hypochlorites, they all decompose to form metal chlorides and oxygen gas. So the metal chlorates decompose to form metal chlorides and oxygen gas. Let's look at potassium chlorate as an example. KClO3, potassium with a plus one, the chlorate polyatomic ion with a charge of negative one. It's gonna make a metal chloride, the metal is potassium. So KCl, simple compound, plus one, minus one, no subscripts needed there and it's gonna give off the oxygen, and the oxygen is gonna be in the form of O2, because it's a diatomic. Do not do O3, please do not do O3. Oxygen's a diatomic when it's by itself. That's the way it's gonna be. Now, we gotta balance the equation. 
I've got two oxygens on the left. I got three on the three on the left, two on the right. I'm going to put a coefficient of two here to get the odd number of oxygens up to an even number of six. Come back here with a three. I've got two potassiums and two chlorines because of the coefficient, so I'm going to do this as well, and it's done and ready to go. If you write the compounds down correctly, balancing will not be a problem. You can probably do all the balancing for decomposition reactions just by visual inspection if you make the compounds correct. Calcium perchlorate, plus two on the calcium. The perchlorate's a negative one, so we got two of the perchlorate ions. We're going to make calcium chloride. Calcium is a plus two, chlorine is a negative one, so that works out nicely. And we're going to give some oxygen off in the form of O2, of course. Balancing, I've got one calcium on both sides. I've got two chlorines on both sides. I've got eight oxygens on the uh, left. I have to have eight oxygens on the right. And we got a balanced equation. So that's all there is to it. I usually do a demo with this in a classroom setting, so I'm gonna run a little video clip here just to show you how a chlorate decomposition would work. It's gonna be specifically for potassium chlorate decomposing. Watch this. Okay, we made it to the final decomposition subcategory, the decomposition of oxyacids. It says here that some acids, particularly oxyacids, decompose to form nonmetal oxides and water. So acids decompose into a nonmetal oxide and water. Let's jump into the example with carbonic acid. It's an oxyacid. It just merely means that it's got hydrogen and it's got a polyatomic ion that contains oxygen. When it decomposes, I know one of the products is gonna be water, and I know the formula for water, so I'm gonna put the water in there first, and then to figure out the nonmetal oxide, that's the tricky part, because I can't use charges to do a nonmetal oxide, it's all nonmetals. All I'm gonna do is look at the acid. I've taken out the two hydrogens and one oxygen to make water, so whatever's left, is going to be my nonmetal oxide, CO2. Take out the water molecule, and what's left is your nonmetal oxide. And when you do it that way, it also makes for a balanced equation. So that's nice. Let's see if that works for sulfur, uh, sulfuric acid. It's going to make a nonmetal oxide in water. Let's take out a water molecule. We took out the two hydrogens and one oxygen. What are we left with? SO3. So the nonmetal oxide in this case is sulfur trioxide. We cannot use charges to figure this one out and this one out because they're not ionic compounds. So we take out the water and see what's left. Works out pretty nicely. If you had a little deja vu moment, it's because you might have noticed that this is merely the reverse reaction of the synthesis reaction of nonmetal oxides in water. If you learn it forward, it's like you get it for free when you do it backwards. It's already there. Here's what I mean. Synthesis of nonmetal oxides in water make an oxyacid. But if we reverse that, then we've got the decomposition reaction 
oxy acids decompose into nonmetal oxides plus water. So it's the same thing, forward and reverse. One synthesis coming together to make one. The other one's decomposition, where you have one part breaking up into two parts. So that's a great deal, an educational bargain. You learn one, you get the other for free. So we made it to the end of the lesson where there's some mixed review practice problems for you to work out on your own. There's 10 problems here. Um, this is what my test looks like. The majority of my test is based on predicting the outcomes of chemical reactions. Only you'll have five reaction types to work with at that time. Right now, you only have two. This is a combination of synthesis reactions and decomposition reactions. What you're going to do is identify the reaction type over here in the left column, synthesis or decomposition. You're going to predict the products over here, and then you're going to balance the equation. It's all about making the correct compounds for the right type of reaction. I recommend that you pause the video and try these on your own. And then you can run the video again and see what the answers are. Let's look at the answers. The first one has to be a decomposition. How do I know that? Because there's only one reactant. Decomposition reactions only have one reactant. They're the only type that has that. Then I look at what I have. I've got a metal in barium and a carbonate. Metal carbonates decompose in a particular way. They make metal oxides and carbon dioxide gas. Yes. Check your charges to make sure the compounds are correct. Mine are written correctly, and it's already balanced. So we're on to the next one. The next one's synthesis, and I know that because I just have a simple hydrogen and a simple chlorine, and there's not really much else I can do, and I don't know any of the other reaction types, so I'm going to combine them, and I'm going to make HCl. Not H2Cl2. I'm just going to look at the charges, plus one, minus one, make the simplest compound possible and then balance it with a coefficient. This next one is also a synthesis reaction because it can't be decomposition. I've got a metal oxide reacting with water. Now, when you have water as a reactant, remember, it's probably going to be a synthesis reaction. Metal oxides in water make metal hydroxides. We learned that with the synthesis reactions previously. Plus two on the strontium, minus one on the hydroxide, makes this a neutral compound, and that gives us a balanced equation as well. Sodium and oxygen, the only thing they can do is combine with each other. It's a synthesis reaction. I look at the charges. Sodium's a plus one, oxygen's a negative two, so I need two sodiums to make this work. I also need to balance the equation. So if I got two oxygens on this side, I need two oxygens on this side, and that means I'm gonna have four sodiums over here. Simple synthesis. And this single reactant must be a simple decomposition. Silver and oxygen will separate from each other to make silver and of course O2, the diatomic, and then we just go from there. Um, we're gonna Get the oxygens right. We need two oxygens over here, and that's going to give us four silvers. Now we're going to balance the equation. This is also going to be a decomposition because there's one reactant. This one's more complicated, so I ask myself, what am I looking at? I got a metal chlorate. Metal chlorates decompose into a metal chloride, and they give off oxygen gas. So there's our oxygen gas. I need six oxygens on this side. I got six oxygens on that side. And uh, I've got one calcium and two chlorines. This is balanced. This is a decomposition. It has to be one reactant, but it's a complicated one. Magnesium hydroxide. Metal hydroxides decompose into a metal oxide plus water. and that one's already balanced. Plus two on the magnesium, minus two on the oxygen, and water is just water. Equations balanced overall. And on to the last three problems. We've got a synthesis reaction here, a nonmetal oxide plus water. When you got water as a reactant, 
It's going to be a synthesis reaction. Nonmetal oxide plus water makes an oxy acid. This happens to be H2SO4. And I'm basically just combining everything together to make that compound. Here we got a decomposition reaction because we have one reactant. All you can do is break hydrogen and chlorine apart, but they are diatomics, so make sure they got the subscripts. And then put a coefficient in front of the HCl. We did that in reverse a few problems back. And then another decomposition. This time we've got a metal chloride, sodium chloride, and the whole chlorate family decomposes to make metal chlorides and give off oxygen gas. And in this rare circumstance, just breaking off the oxygen makes it correct and balanced. Plus one minus one, O2 is supposed to be O2. It's good to go. So those are the problems. Our next lesson will be on single replacement reactions. I hope you join me then.